In 2008, Sonny John Moore started producing and performing under the alias Skrillex. Just two years later, on October 22, 2010, Skrillex's EP Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites was released. From that day onwards, dubstep as we knew it would evolve into what it is today. Skrillex. 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 I'm sure a lot of you can relate to an early point in your teenage years when you first heard Skrillex's music. Personally, I remember being in the 8th grade when my friend came up to me with his iPod Touch and asked if I heard the new Skrillex song. At the time, I had only heard of the name, but hadn't given his music a chance yet. My friend handed me one of his earbuds and he played the first song off the EP, Rock and Roll. Immediately, I noticed it was quite different to the other electronic music out there, and especially different from mainstream music. It was very upbeat, with a lot of synthesized elements and a robotic voice as the lead vocal. The world of EDM was new to me, and I guess the only thing I could have compared it to at the time was Daft Punk. Wait for the best part, my friend says to me. Shortly after that, I heard the now iconic vocal sound. When it dropped, I was mind blown. I hadn't heard anything like this before. The whole song leading up to this point had just been a floor on the floor kick pattern the entire time. And when that second drop finally hits, it slows down to a half time kick snare pattern and you're met with the nastiest arrangement of growl basses. There's something about that release that is so satisfying, chaotic, but mesmerizing. I was hooked. When I got home from school, I very legally obtained Skrillex's music like any other teenager would and imported those songs to my 8GB iPod Touch. Instantly, I became a fan. Following the release of Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites, this would inspire artists from around the world to start producing dubstep and adding their own flair to the genre. From then on, I would discover artists like Adventure Club, Flux Pavilion, Feed Me, Knife Party, Zomboy, and many others. The energy in these songs were so addicting and so stimulating. The basses sounded like melting robots and it's done in such a way that it has distinguishable rhythms and flows. They're not just random noises, they're strategic noises. This proper phrasing with basses and glitches that complement each other, coupled with interesting sound design and various melodic elements. Some people might find dubstep obnoxious and that's totally fair. I would even agree and go as far as to say, that's the whole point. We do want a loud and obnoxious song, we do want some chaos, we do want some variation. I want to be able to let loose and headbang my heart out or jump in a mosh pit. You don't get that feeling with the other EDM genres. With that being said, I think this is where we went wrong with grouping modern dubstep and OG dubstep under the same umbrella. See, as with many forms of art, the meta and trends can start to change when other artists join the scene and inevitably put their own spin on it. This was no different for dubstep. Before Skrillex, the dubstep genre was known to be more minimalistic, groovy, psychedelic. It was music you could chill out and relax to. Nowadays, it's quite the opposite. Well, how did we get to this point? Obviously, the biggest pivot in OG dubstep was Skrillex's music, and when more artists joined the scene, there was more experimentation with the genre. Rules were bent, boundaries were pushed, and artists developed their own signature sounds. While all of this was happening, we continued to call this new music dubstep. Well, there were efforts to rename modern dubstep to brostep, but that didn't seem to stick very well. I'm sure there are still folks out there who refer to it as brostep, but in mainstream EDM, modern dubstep has taken over the title of dubstep. Fast forward to today, we now have two very polarizing styles of music that are still both categorized as dubstep. For new fans, this can be confusing, and I imagine it's pretty frustrating when you're trying to discover more OG dubstep music, but all you're finding is aggressive modern dubstep. I suspect this is ultimately why the Reddit community ended up creating separate subreddits for both. Today, dubstep is alive and well with hundreds of artists touring every year rinsing out their signature sounds, they're hosting their own festivals, headlining shows, slinging merch, and even collaborating with mainstream artists. The genre as a whole fills a niche in the EDM industry that no other genre could, and because of that, I'm confident that the scene will continue to thrive in the foreseeable future. Skrillex left his mark in the dubstep community, and after the Recess album, Sonny took a step away from dubstep and started to experiment more with other genres. A year after Recess, he and Diplo would release an album together as their duo project, Jack U. Skrillex and Diplo presenting Jack U. The Jack U album was composed of pop and trap records with artists like Justin Bieber, 2 Chains, and Kaiza to name a few. Sonny's released a lot of other music since then, and you'll notice that none, or almost none of them, are dubstep productions. 
he's proved himself to be an incredibly versatile producer who is still able to keep things fresh. Here's a list of some of the artists he's worked with over the years. Sunny pioneered a whole generation of artists to expand horizons and explore the possibilities of electronic dance music, let alone music as a whole. Sunny's music touched and inspired artists from every corner of the music industry. He's worked with pop artists, rappers, rock bands, brands, he's even written movie scores. To his fans, he was no longer seen as just the dubstep guy, but to many others, he still is. When I tell people Skrillex is my favorite artist, they think, oh, that's the guy who produced Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites, or oh, that's the guy who did Bangarang, which is fair since those are some of his most popular productions, but I think a lot of people are just unaware that he's moved on to other genres. When Skrillex comes to mind to people who aren't familiar with him, they think of this, when in reality, it's more like this. It's been eight years since he released his last album, and his fans have been foaming at the mouth for any sign of a new album. It's not about dubstep anymore, it hasn't been for a while. We've heard the quality of his newer productions, and we're fully ready to accept a new album without a single dubstep song. So in the middle of editing this video, Skrillex actually dropped two albums. Do I just end the video here, or like, what am I supposed to- On January 1st, 2023, the day we thought would never come was finally here. Skrillex posted the teaser for his upcoming albums, and the EDM community went absolutely feral. Needless to say, Sonny is still receiving overwhelming support from his fans, despite having been less active over the recent years. He explained that this was due to his personal battles he was struggling with. Sonny goes on to mention he has since found a new sense of peace, and is ready to move forward with his career. The response he's received on his teaser just goes to show that his fans have so much trust in him and his music. Most of us have only heard snippets of these songs at live shows or recordings of live shows, but we all know this album is going to exceed expectations. Whether or not you are a fan of his early work, there's no doubt that Sonny is a talented musician. He's received numerous accolades for his work, including 8 Grammy Awards, a Billboard Music Award, and 2 MTV Video Music Awards. Sonny revolutionized the EDM scene and set the bar for quality and creativity. While it's unfortunate that OG dubstep and modern dubstep share the same name, I don't think Sonny deserves all the hate for it. When the Scary Monsters EP released, his music was too different to be ignored, and I'm sure it was going to receive backlash no matter what. At the end of the day, music is subjective and people shouldn't be shamed for enjoying a certain type of music. Let people be happy. Ultimately, we should be grateful that there are artists out there that can invoke such a positive emotional response upon a large audience. It brings us together, it gets us through hard times, it helps us unwind. Skrillex was the introduction to EDM for a lot of people, and he's been a huge inspiration for a lot of the artists you see on festival lineups today. After all these years, his creativity and production quality remains unmatched. And that is why 